Hello and thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show. A shadier vision of the Sunshine State, the Florida Project is a bittersweet story of slumming it in America's motels. We hear from the film's director, Sean Baker, and lead actress, Bria Viante. All hail César Baldacini. The late French artist is celebrated with a retrospective at the Pompidou Center here in Paris. And the South African film that's made waves in the Rosa community. New release, The Wound, portrays an LGBT love story in a controversial cultural context. We're starting with a film shot in what's been dubbed the happiest place in the world. The American city of Orlando might be home to Disneyland, but the Florida Project is a very different take on the Sunshine State. It's a fictional account of what is a grim reality for many people, a precarious existence living in motels where children have to make their own luck and their own fun. The film stars Willem Dafoe, Bria Viante and some scene-stealing little actors. It's released this week here in France. Eve Jackson caught up with director Sean Baker and his leading lady at its Cannes Film Festival debut. Hey, Lee, got a situation here. Open up. It's only second week of the summer and there's already been a dead fish in the pool. We're trying to get it back alive. Water balloons thrown at tourists. Boobies! Boobies! I failed as a mother, Moni. You yeah, Mom, <laughs> you're a disgrace. Sean Baker, hello. Hi, how are you? I just wanted to tell you, congratulations. Your film is my favourite film that I've seen at Cannes this year. First, I want to congratulate you on the casting. There are three main characters. One is Willem Dafoe. Yes. The others are unknown actresses. Um, one of them, you found the mum, you found on social media. Can yes. you tell us how that happened? And sure. what a big risk to take. It is. It's, it's more of a risk for my producers and financiers because I was convinced from the beginning that she could do it. So I saw Bria on her Instagram and there was something about her. I don't even know why I came across her Instagram. I think somebody had reposted one of her postings and she just, she is very different from your normal selfie Instagram girl. There was no puckering, there was no posing. Instead, there was her being silly. And actually, she said a few things that just made me laugh out loud. And I thought, she has that youthful energy, the, the, that crazy, the, the wonderful physicality. And at first we were thinking, let's cast an A-list Hollywood star to be this, this character. And I was using her as an example, if we can find somebody like her. <laughs> and then finally, somebody just said, why don't we just reach out to her? Hey, you were you were soliciting in our building. You can't You're do that. You're not even a real cop. Hey, I'm just doing my job here, all right? You can't do that on our property. I already called the cops. You gotta go back inside with me. Get off your pirate ship. You're Are riding you... a golf cart, okay? I need you to come back right now. If you're leaving, I gotta confiscate that. I need you to give me. You f right now? bitch! Come back here. One day, cause I don't watch a lot of movies or TV, so one day I got a message, and um, it's Sean, and it just says hey, I sent you an email about a film opportunity. And I get a lot of like creepy messages, so I'm over here like, okay. So I look him up and um, I find out who he is. And I was like, okay, interesting. So we got on the phone and he told me a little bit about the movie. And I still thought it was a joke because I'm like, someone's just messing with me because this doesn't happen to people, you know what I mean? Tell us about acting with an Oscar-nominated actor, Willem Dafoe. Oh my the god, I was so nervous to meet him because I was just like, oh my goodness. But um, he is very humble and he's very easy to talk to, very easy to work with, and he made me feel really comfortable. And I was so thankful for that because I didn't know what to expect from him. And um, in one of the scenes where me and him are like arguing, towards the end, like. He was yelling at me so crazy. Every take we did, my lips started to quiver because I was like, stop it. <laughs> like, I hate getting yelled at. But he is such an amazing actor that he just brought out all the right emotions. And I'm just so grateful to have gotten to work with him. Yeah. If you're working, who's looking after money? You're not my father. I don't want to be your you father. You can't treat me like this. The Florida Project refers to Disney World. Yes. Um, but the poverty-stricken world and the day-to-day -day struggles we see of these families is like a world away, a universe away um, right. from that. Tell us about this metaphor. Well, it's not a metaphor. It's, I think it's more just the 
the fact that the irony is so extreme in this case. You know, you have motel life that is occurring across the nation. You have homeless families living in poverty week to week in these budget motels in Boston, in San Bernardino, in uh, Orange County, California, all over. But there's something, of course, very ironic and sad about the fact that there are kids living outside what is the most magical place on earth. And because this is a film that focuses on children and the way that children see the world, we wanted, one of our messages with this film, I think, is that kids will always be kids and find a way of still being kids. So even though the little char the character of Mooney, um, she doesn't have the means to visit the park uh, or any of the parks in the area, still she'll find things in her everyday life that is just as special and as fun and as adventurous as the attractions in the park. And this is where we get free ice cream. Really? Yeah. Yeah, follow me. Could we have okay. some money? Do we have enough? I'm filming. <laughs> Many people know you for the groundbreaking iPhone movie, Tangerine. Yeah. Often you're dealing with people living on the margins of society. How do you get inside these communities when you're not from them? It takes time. It's all about time. And it's about respect. And, and it's about collaboration. It's those three things, say Tangerine. I was completely from outside of that world. I was a cisgender white uh, male from white guy from a privileged background and so was my co-screenwriter and we weren't about to walk in there and impose any sort of script or plot we wanted to hear from the community hear their voices and we wanted to accurately represent them and, and respectfully represent them so we had uh, people from back to Florida we had people from the motels reading our synopsis and our treatment and making sure that they approved of what they read and then we were working at the agencies so that we could get we can get the thumbs up in terms of you're you're doing this right. This is accurate. Have a nice day. Love you, baby. I love you too. Well, if you're strolling through the streets of Paris this month, you might be pleased to get a golden seal of approval, a huge thumbs up outside the Pompidou Center. It's part of a retrospective dedicated to late sculptor César Baldacini. The mid-century artist was best known for his crushed compressions of cars, scrap metal, and even household objects. But this show takes in his body of work in all its diversity. Thomas Waterhouse has more. Proudly pointing skywards, this shiny golden statue is the best-known work by César. A massive thumbs up to the world from the French icon, one that's now getting approval from visitors in the shadow of Paris's Pompidou Centre. My name is César. I do sculptures or whatever people call sculptures. Before crafting out his unusual Pollex, César had a more traditional past, spending 15 years at Paris's fine art school. But his dream and his obsession had always been the human form. I don't think about what I'm doing, I think after. He also made this single breast, this fist, and these two fingers. But one single thumb was all it would take for his name to be known. Small or large, it became his signature and a kind of self-portrait. It's a cast of his very own thumb. So when you see this sculpture, even though César is no longer with us, you still see him because it's an exact carbon copy of his thumb and its prints. As a megalomaniac, César would go on to reproduce this thumb in all kinds of materials and sizes until he made this a 12-metre-tall version. It's a big thumbs-up in the air. Yeah, we like it. We give it a thumbs-up. I have no opinion either way. It's now over 20 years since his death, but César's big thumbs are still being made. The last one, measuring 6 metres, was sold for 1.2 million euros. But for something cheaper, try this chocolate version, which will set you back a mere six euros. Next, film critics are saying this could be South Africa's moonlight moment, referring to the coming-of-age story of a gay man in Miami that scooped the Oscar for Best Picture in February. The Wound is, on the surface, a love story between two men from the Xhosa tribe. It's a rare glance at LGBT issues in a tribal context, as well as showing the ritual circumcision that's a rite of passage in this community.
The wound has been well received abroad and is currently in the running for Best Foreign Film at next year's Oscars. Yet in South Africa, the film's been very divisive and some of its actors have even received death threats. Some say it portrays deeply private cultural practices that are not fit for a movie theatre. It affected the Xhosa nation because it's a Xhosa movie and it has been shot in the Eastern Cape. And the cry was not just from us as young people, but even the king himself was surprised that there is such a movie without his knowledge because he was never approached about this. He does not know where those people got the consent to actually use this ritual and just expose it like that. Even if we're poor, we're black people, we're living in rural areas. We need to be respected. People should not make money by killing our culture, by killing our intangible asset, by killing our legacy, because this thing is a legacy to us. We are proud. Finally, we'll leave you with an event that blends music, movement and contemporary dance. Choreographer William Forsyth has teamed up with musician Ryoji Ikeda to create an installation called Nowhere and Everywhere at the same time, an experience just as mystifying as its title might suggest. You can catch that at La Villette's Cultural Complex in the northeast of Paris till the end of the month. Do remember to check out our website and you can keep up with us on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.